Corey said. This is what I want you to do. All, all Team 4 group members come right here. Hurry. Team 4 right here. Come, 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 come. presentation and concept teaching okay all of those cards have to do with one of these three models there's different vocabulary words from the model or different phrases from the model some of them actually go into the same like who can tell me one thing that would be the same in each anticipatory set what else closure what else Objections, formative assessments, reflective questions, differentiation. Those kind of things go in all. So if you if your word is differentiation, just slap it up wherever it goes wherever. But some of them are specifically here, here, or here. Ready? Go. Then you go back to the end of the line, the next person comes up. And when you come up again. And you can ask your group members and they can yeah. uh, You can't go through the file and choose one that you know. You just grab the top one. Grab the top one. No, I don't want to
Concept teaching that were here that you read about. Critical and non-critical attributes. Okay, good. That's a good one. Critical and non-critical attributes. It's very, very important for concept teaching to understand what that means. And we're going to talk about it. What and what else? Example and non-example. Examples and non-examples. Very critical. Um, advanced organizers in presentation is another one that. You should have some sort of advanced organizer or graphic organizer or something, you know, for each of the um, instructional models. But yeah, we talked about that in terms of presentation. But the the main difference from presentation to the other ones is the presentation. We're adding onto existing knowledge, or Presenting new knowledge, information, okay? That's when we give a presentation. So by me um, giving a presentation instructional model right now, why am I doing that? This is a new information that we're learning. Because it's either new information 
or since you read the chapter, it might be adding on to a little bit of what you have mm -hmm. already, right? Mm -hmm. so, so with the concept teaching, how do you know which model to use? Like, didn't it have two in the reading? There's yeah. two different ones, and you get to choose. We're going to talk about that. Okay. So good, good question. All right. Um, so this was an anticipatory set. It took about four or five minutes by the time we finished talking about it. But who was involved? Okay. Everybody, yeah. Everybody was involved. Who had to think at least for a little bit of that time about these things? Everybody did. So that's what you want to do with, I mean, I'm not saying this is the greatest anticipatory set ever. I'm just saying that you want to try and think of things that include, that include and have, have everybody participate and everybody think about this at least some of the time. I'm sure while we were doing this game, some of you probably didn't think about, you know, mind wandered on something else a little bit, but as much as possible, we want to provide a, something to have the students do the intellectual work. And by doing this, hopefully, um, some of you clarified a few things that you may have um, thought about, like when Erna put one up here and realized, oh, that, it should be here, and that's what we want to do. We want to put it in the wrong place and realize it's in the wrong place and change it, right? Okay, so now you need a volunteer to take these charts and just set them down over there, okay? Volunteer. Three volunteers. out with this graphic organizer and we're still talking because the thing's not warmed up yet. Right? On. But you can see that there in the first graphic organizer, this one, you can see that there's three separate instructional models we've been talking about, right? Each of those instructional models are used at a different time. And the time you use them depends upon what you're teaching, okay? If you're teaching somebody a new skill, like how to fix a flat tire, that would be direct instruction, okay? If you're going to teach somebody about how to teach the concept teaching model, that would be presentation, okay? All right. So, So that's the first graphic advanced organizer. And while we're going through our lesson today, 
think about what you, like one of these is skill mastery, right? So write skill mastery down right there, because you all know that. You know, fill in what you can, and then as we go through it, fill in the next one, okay? Now the next one is the steps. So here's direct instruction. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six. Presentation, steps, concept teaching. Do you know what the first step is in each of these? Anticipatory, Anticipatory step. What else would be the next or somewhere? Objectives? Mm -hmm. What about direct instruction? Do you know where? What would be the next step? Teacher modeling? Or, well, just hold on until we get there. So, the outcomes of our lesson today, at the end of our lesson, I would like you to be able to turn to your partner and describe the differences between these three models. All right? Another outcome is that you will be able to list the headings of the concept teaching lesson plan template and describe what goes in each of those headings and provide three examples of a good concept to teach. I must warn you that I've been told that this is the most difficult instructional uh, uh, model because concepts isn't really what you think it might be. And we'll go through exactly what's the difference in all that. But it's not just any random thing. It's a concept that fits into a certain way of teaching it. All right, so first topic. Um, concept teaching, there's three learning outcomes, or four. Okay? One of the learning outcomes is you're teaching key concepts of another le like for instance let's say that you're going to teach a science lesson okay you look through the science lesson and you realize that in the science lesson there's some vocabulary words or maybe some concepts that the students might not know before you teach the science lesson you want all of the students to know those key concepts because if they don't understand the key concepts they won't understand the next lesson you teach fully, all right? So you would look through your science lesson or math lesson or language arts or history lesson, whatever lesson, and find key concepts that students might not understand and teach them. For example, if you were teaching addition, the concept of addition to kindergartners, you might come in and just start saying addition and adding as if the kids heard that word before, right? But think about it. A kid just starting school, how many of those kids actually have heard that word addition before? I would guess probably not very many. Some kids may have, and their parents <coughs> have sat down with them and taught them some things, right? But that's such a common word to us that we wouldn't even think that somebody would know what that means. But that's why you got to step back and look through your content and pick out words that, hey, they might not really know what that is. They need to explain it. Okay? Another important outcome is to provide a basis, a foundation of communication. For example, the concept of differentiation. If we're teachers talking to each other, and I say the word differentiation, I'm assuming you know what that word is. If you don't know what that word is, or if you use it and I don't know what it is, we won't be communicating really well, right? So these are the outcomes. All right, now let's compare these. You can see here that there's differences, right? Skill mastery is the main one for direct instruction. 
acquire or retain new information for presentation is the main one, right? Or expand what we already know. And what we just talked about, key concepts and basis for understanding. So this slide presentation is going to be on Canvas. And you can look at it whenever you want. All right? going to teach you how to change a flat tire, okay? Would it be best for me to stand in front with a PowerPoint slide and explain to you all the steps? No. Or would it be better for us to go out by a car that has a flat tire and me show you how to change a flat tire? So that would be teacher modeling. I would show you how to change a flat tire. Then I would gather a group of you around different cars with flat tires and let you try and change one as a group. Then we'd do individual to see if you could do it on your own. Okay, so that's direct instruction, not presentation. Even though that might be new information to you, it's a specific step by step by step by step thing. So that's direct instruction. A presentation is ideas and, you know, let's, let's evaluate some things and let me explain a few things to you um, that you might not know or that you do know and we're going to add to it. But not really a skill, mastery skill, okay? And so the concept teaching is the same thing. I'm not going to do concept teaching. And I'm going, to give, I'm going to show you a concept teaching lesson, and you'll see why teaching a concept is better teaching it this way than that way or this way. Okay? Good question, Marshall. Is that okay? Yeah. Any other questions? If you have any other questions, I need you to ask me because this is important that you understand this, these key differences. All right? All right, so topic one was the outcomes or the purposes for teaching the different models. Now I'm going to explain the process or steps to a concept teaching lesson. All right, this is the second topic out of four, four topics. First one was about the outcomes. Second one is about the steps. So in a concept teaching lesson, there are certain steps. This one is pretty much the same as any other one, right? Establishing set, anticipatory set. That's in all of the lessons, right? Yes. Okay. So that's the same. Then this is where it gets different and what Kaylee was speaking of a minute ago. You choose your approach. There's two different ways to do a concept teaching lesson. They're exactly the same except two things are flipped. Okay? So, there's two ways. One's called a direct presentation and one's called a concept attainment. Can anybody, is anybody brave enough to explain or summarize the difference between these two from the reading? Anybody want to try and give that a try? <coughs> so try to give it a try. Bro. I'll try. To give it a try. <laughs> um, so in the book, it gave the example of an island. So if I were to directly present the concept of an island, I'd say this is an island because it's completely surrounded by water. It has to have these attributes. Um, and then we would go through examples. For the concept attainment, I would give all of these examples and I'd be like, what do they have in common? What are some attributes? And then with that, we would come up with the the critical attributes and then non-critical attributes to define an island. Exactly. Okay. So, that's perfect. 
a direct presentation. You just tell the students what the concept is. Then you go and give some examples and non-examples, some critical attributes and non-critical attributes. And we're going to talk about those in just a second. The concept attainment is you flip that so that you give the examples and non-examples, look at differences, compare and contrast them, and then come up with what you, a hypothesis of what we're going to talk about. Okay? All right. And then, once we got this done, we're going to test for concept attainment. That doesn't mean give them a test on paper and pencil. This can be any kind of formative assessment. It could be a group assessment. You know. And the last one is analyze student thinking processes. This is helping the students think about the way they are thinking. Okay? Metacognition. And we ask them specific questions that help them think about the way they would think. So here's the three steps, or here's the three instructional models with the comparing and contrasting the steps of direct instruction. These are probably too small for you to see anyway, so they'll be on the on canvas. But these are the steps. Anticipatory set is all the same. The closure will be all the same. Objectives, okay, there's parts of the direct instruction, so it's all, all in there. But what I'm hoping that you can understand is that there are three different models. And each model goes through a different process, different step. Otherwise, we just end up teaching the same way every single time, no matter what we're teaching. We're just going to teach it by standing in front and tell everybody, right? Okay, so let's keep going. We're going to break down those steps real quick, all right? Establish the anticipatory set. Remember, five minutes or less. <coughs> engaging, everybody participates. The purpose is to bring up some background knowledge of what the students already know, right? It's really important. That's, it's not just a fun activity, but it, there's a purpose. And the purpose for the anticipatory set is to make a connection or to bring up some background knowledge that the students might have or have them think of experiences that relate to what we're talking about. Did that anticipatory set we just did, did it accomplish this? Huh? Yeah. Did it accomplish this? Yes. Okay. And then we went through the, the aims. And the, okay, so let me just add a little note here. When you're stating objectives, what the best thing to do is have your objectives already written on a poster type piece of paper and stuck up on the board. Okay? You can do that. You can have that prepared and ready to go before you even start. Because if you don't, what happens? What, what are you forced to do if you're going to state the objectives and write them on the board? after you start the lesson. Students will forget. Well, Students well, might forget about it. You might forget about it. You might forget about it. No side track. It takes away a lot of time during the teaching. Yeah, it takes away time, important minutes, right? And not only that, it forces you to turn your back on the students. What's going on back there when your back is studiously writing out all these detailed objectives that take five minutes, right? Chaos is breaking loose. And we don't want that. So why not just have the objectives already written and, and stuck up on the board? Did I put the objectives on the board? Did I? No. No. They're not there. So. <laughs> you should have done that. You should have had 
them listed up here. But I did show you on the slide. Okay. So that's the first step. And then we choose which approach we want to use, the direct instruction or the concept attainment. And as we just talked about, they're just flipped. They're exactly the same thing, only they're flipped. We either start off with this one, let the students think about the examples and the attributes, and then hypothesize and come up with the concept, or we tell them the concept and then look at examples and critical attributes. Okay? Then test for understanding. How do we know which is best for the students? Good. Does it depend on their age or Good the question. concept? I would say it depends on the age and the concept, both. Yeah. But you know, just because a, a kid is in kindergarten or first grade doesn't mean they can't think in higher order thinking skills. I mean, it's, it's not impossible for them to analyze something and, and guess things, right? So we don't want to assume that we have to just be real easy. We could do this. But for the most part, the younger the students are, you might want to work on this and then move over here when you can. Okay? And the, I mean, it just depends on you, which one you want. They both accomplish the same goal, and I would suggest you try it out with both. All right? Then you talk about examples and non-examples, critical attributes and non-critical attributes. These examples need to bring an abstract idea or concept into the physical realm of a student. Okay? Some concepts you can't actually touch the concept in a, in a class because it's just not feasible. So you need pictures. Video, manipulative, something that helps you get concrete about the topic, right? Non-critical attributes. Just because an attribute is a common attribute doesn't mean it's critical or non-critical. I'll show you examples in just a minute. Then you test for concept attainment. So you're this is quite easy, doesn't have to take a long time. You just want the students, you just want to know if the students can say yes, that's a concept, no, that's not it, and why. Okay? Now, I know you might be thinking, or it's hard to visualize this because we don't, we're not actually talking about a concept, but we will. Um, as soon as I get to examples. And so the students are going to clearly describe the process that they thought about the concept. And you're going to ask these questions. Okay? When did you first grasp the concept? You ask somebody that. They'll have to think back about what they were talking about, what they were looking at, what they were thinking about. See, when you ask those kind of questions, it makes them think about it. So yeah, you got yes or no questions to see if they can identify the concept. But you also have critical thinking questions, okay? And then you have a closure, just like the other closures we've done. But you want to try and be creative. And I know that some of you may think that it's hard to come up with the creative, um, but keep thinking about it. And as you keep thinking about it, Lots of ideas will start coming to you, okay? All right, let's talk about the third topic is the lesson plan template, okay? Here's, here's the headings of the lesson plan template, and here's what goes in those headings, all right? Any questions about this? So, for example, this one. This is the kind of stuff that goes in analyze. Okay? I have a question. Good. Is there a, um, on Canvas, is there an exam lesson template example uh, for, the, for the concept teaching? Um, I'm not sure. 
That's a good question. But that's why this is a difficult, this is one of the more difficult approaches, and I haven't really found a real good one, okay. example. And I don't want to give you an example that's not a good example. But I am going to show you an example okay. in just a minute. Okay? So the template's not online. The template is on Canvas with the appropriate example. headings, but yeah, just not a lesson plan that's written out already. Okay? Good question. I have another question. Yeah. Um, about how much time is appropriate to spend on testing for concept attainment and analyzing student thinking? Um, the testing for concept attainment will probably not take very long, five minutes or three minutes. And you just wanted something short and quick to let you know that the kids know what you're talking about. The analyzed student thinking might take a little longer because this is where you really want to get into helping them develop critical thinking skills. Now, a concept teaching lesson probably won't take an hour, like a, like a math lesson or a science lesson. You're probably not going to spend an hour on teaching one concept. But you want to teach a concept before you teach the math lesson if there's any concepts that you think the students might not understand. All right? So here's some examples, and I want you to try and think of why these are examples here, and why these are not examples of a good concept. Okay? So in the book, it talked about islands. When you visualize islands, there, there are some critical attributes. right? What is a critical attribute <coughs> of an island? That means, what does an island have to have to be called an island? Water. Surrounded by water, right? It has to be surrounded by water. <coughs> what is a non-critical attribute? That means something that you might think, but isn't really. Palm trees. Palm trees. Coconut trees, right? Warm, warm weather. Warm weather. Yeah, those are non-critical attributes because not all islands have coconut trees in warm weather. What about a beach? Yeah, we think of islands and we think, oh yeah, beach, it's great. Well, it is great. Beaches are great on islands, but that's not a critical attribute of an island. And there's differences. For example, a peninsula, you know, is surrounded by water on three sides, not all sides. There's a little difference there, right? So this is, a concept that you can teach in the concept method. Communism. Communism is a form of government that has some critical attributes and non-critical attributes. The non-critical attributes make it seem like it could be a different form of government. Okay? Like taking from the rich to give to the poor. That is an attribute of communism, but that's also an attribute of socialism. So we can't call that a critical attribute. Photosynthesis, addition, a river delta. Raise your hand if you know what a river delta is. I think so. Isn't it like that? No, I'm not trying to bring it to the It's where a major river enters into the ocean, right? Like the Mississippi River. If you've seen an aerial photograph of the Mississippi River going into the Gulf of Mexico, you'll see what a delta looks like. The problem is, if a river goes into a lake, is that a delta? No. No, so that's a non Non-critical attribute is a river emptying into another body of water. That's nice, and that a delta does do that, but it also that's not a critical attribute. Sandstone arch. You know, there's other uh, formations that seem like they would be called an arch, but little differences make it this an arch, and something else that might look like this not an arch. Okay. The ghetto. 
there are actually attributes of a neighborhood that's considered a ghetto. And those attributes can be critical attributes or non-critical attributes, as opposed to a slum or a game land, something like that. But look over here. Can you see how these, there's kind of opposites or little things that are different that you have to point out to clarify what it exactly is. But if you look over here, Pearl Harbor. That's an event or a thing that happened or a place. But if you think of Pearl Harbor, there's only Pearl Harbor. So it's not like there's another Pearl Harbor, right? <coughs> but if you think about like somebody brought up in the last class, like war, the, the concept of war, that might be a concept because what's the difference between a war and a battle and a fight? You know, they're all kind of the same thing, but there's certain differences that make a war a war and a battle a battle, right? The Pali Lookout, that's a place up above Kaneohe, it's really beautiful. But there's, it's, there's only the poly lookout. You can't really, it's not similar. It's similar to other places, but another place like this would be called that place, not the poly lookout, right? Boston Tea Party. It's a very important event that happened, but it's not a concept, okay? Freedom, what really means freedom or what taxes really means, you know, what is the difference between a contribution and a tax? All right, so those are some examples. Any questions about those? Got to think, these are really important to think through. All right, so this was our objective today. So I want you to turn to your partner and I want you to describe the differences between these three instructional models. Okay, ready, go. Talk to somebody near you. Okay, so continue your conversations, um, but look through this lesson plan template that's blank. It, it's a fill in the blank uh, heading. So write down what the headings are and keep talking in, in your group. You can do this as a group. Is 
Talk to each other. Something goes, in those boxes. Something goes in these three boxes that I'd like you to try and think of. What goes in these boxes right here? Analyze. you can teach, write on this 3 by 5 card one concept that you think might be a good concept to teach. Remember, you're choosing what grade level you're, you're teaching, you're choosing what content subject you're teaching, so it's up to you. If you want to teach first grade science, think, think of a concept in that, okay? So put on this 3 by 5 card. I realize we're going a little faster than I would like. You know, give you a lot more time to discuss this, to fill out the papers. What do you think is a good topic you can teach? Put it on this card. And you can't use mine, but you can look and see something that you might think. Brooke? Yeah, we can grab a new card. Are they passing it out? Oh, no. Uh, they probably just. I thought it. Can you watch the other one? I thought it was the first one. So those three, those three blank rows on the paper would be examples and non-examples. You have to make sure you cover that. Make sure you talk about and explain. This is an example. This is not an example. Okay? If you get the right concept, that will become clear what that means. This is, these are critical attributes. This is the second blank row. Critical attributes, non-critical attributes. And the last one is student exploring and discovering, hypothesizing about the concept, if you're doing this. Okay? Now, think of a concept that you want to teach. Write it on that 3 by 5 card. Can you be an abstract? Two minutes. <laughs> the, the, the concept 
needs to be something that there's examples of and not examples of. So, for example, Pearl Harbor, there's no non-examples of Pearl Harbor. There is Pearl Harbor. There isn't something that's Pearl Harbor that's not Pearl Harbor. No, because there, there's not a non-example. Well, what about photosynthesis? Like, how is it an example and not an example? If, if you look at photosynthesis, what is, what is the concept of photosynthesis? So that, that is a cycle. It's a cycle that changes oxygen into carbon dioxide in a plant. Is there any other processes similar to that in science that you would have to make a distinction between, okay, this is photosynthesis, this is something else that's like photosynthesis, but it's not. I don't know, I'm not. I don't know for sure. I just thought there probably would be, right? So, so I don't know. It's just my understanding. So for the for the example one, it should be like there is two other two other things that kind of like having the similarities, but the other one is just absolute, like nothing yes. else. Is that correct? Yes. So something that is a concept that's not clear or that could be a little confusing that has an absolute or definite, that those are called attributes. Absolute are called critical attributes. They have to have this to be an island. Um, keep thinking. This is the hardest part of this instructional model. <laughs> if you keep thinking about it, though, and you understand the difference, it will kind of come to you. But it takes some talking about. And time's up. So write something on your card. Did you write something? Just the concept. Just the concept. Okay. Just the concept? Yeah, just the concept. Probably one word or two words. What's a concept? It's an idea. This is all we're for sure teaching, right? It is all we're for sure teaching? No, what? No. This is, I just want you to write down what you think might be a good example. Everybody got one? Yes. Okay, fold your card. Start, hold your card, pass it around. So everybody pass that way. And Erna, you take some from there and bring them over here and let them pass them around. Okay, ready? Go. Start passing. Pass. Give them there. Some more. Pass it around. Okay, keep going. One more trip. Bring a few more over here. Okay. Um, stop. Everybody have one? No, everybody make sure you have one. Pass those out. So everybody has one. Okay. Everybody have anybody have an extra one? Okay, so what I would like to do is somebody we're going to talk about five of these. <coughs> so, Nathan, what's written on your card? Um, I'm gender. Gender. Is that a concept? What do you think? Yes or no? Probably not. I would say no. Gender. Very specific. It's yeah. it's like the the problem with that is gender is well I guess technically I guess technically there could be other genders besides male and female but I would say there's male and female and so 
if you're a female, then you're a female, right? And so there isn't a non-example of a female. Actually, <laughs> OBI. What? I talked about it in psychology. OBI. Some um, people are born like a male, but then their body produces too much estrogen, and so they end up looking like a female. And so technically, they are a transgender. So, but the so anyway, <laughs> I, I'm sure that technically people would argue that there is, but I would say in this case. Uh, let's see, shall you read yours? Uh, gravity. What? Gravity. Gravity. Yeah. Okay, so what are critical attributes of gravity? And what are non-critical attributes? So is there, is there any non-critical attributes of gravity? that would make that confuse with something else, another law of the universe? Okay, so what I'm trying to help you understand is that if it takes you a long time to think of critical attributes and non-critical attributes and example of gravity and a non-example of gravity might be a little too complicated for this what we're doing. Okay? Yeah. Tina, what is your say? Um, mammals or integers? Mammals? Um, mammals might work because there are critical and non-critical attributes of a mammal. Okay. For example, fur. If a warm blood. If an animal or something alive does not have warm blood, then it's not a mammal. But since everything has blood, that's a that's a critical non-attribute. But warm, is it a non attribute or it's a uh, Warm-blooded is a critical attribute. <coughs> Having blood yeah. is, is also an attribute, but that doesn't mean they're a mammal. Okay. But what about fur? Do all mammals have fur? And if something has fur then or not fur, then it's not a mammal? No. no. Yeah, I don't know. But you got to think. <laughs> <laughs> like a dolphin. So it's is a dolphin yeah. a mammal? Yeah. 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 Humans? They don't have fur. So, yeah, so something like that would be good. Okay, one more. Simone? Government. Uh, what's an attribute and a non-critical non-attribute of government? What's the opposite of government? Chaos. Chaos. Yeah. Chaos or anarchy? Yeah. Or, well, anarchy is a type of government. Is it? I guess a specific type of government. Like if you're going to yeah. teach like a democracy, you could have attributes so of democracy. The, the concept of democracy mm -hmm. yeah. is a concept. Because mm -hmm. there's other kinds of things that might appear to be democracy, but they're not, because democracy has certain traits, certain things that make it democracy. Okay? All right, so this could take some thought, right, obviously. Use a lot of Google. Just Google some, or think, I would think first on what topic you want to teach, or what subject. That's what I meant, and then Google the information. Math, <laughs> science, language arts, history, social studies, some content area, and then think of some concepts that might be in those content areas. And then start looking up Google and doing some research so that you can clearly define what it is and what it isn't. Right? Full. You need a definition of what it is and of what it not is. And if you can only say, well, it's only this, if I give a non-example, then it's something completely I mean, it's not like quite like that, but you just want to make sure <coughs> that there's critical attributes, non-critical. I'm going to give you an example in just a minute. I'm going to teach you a lesson real fast. Of course. 
so this will be for our next micro teaching? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to teach the concept of this I, for instance, uh, plus photosynthesis. <laughs> you have to compact it into like a 30 minute lesson. 20 to 30 minutes. You don't have to teach the whole process of photosynthesis. Yeah, you just teach the concept. Just think of a concept, teach the attributes, non attributes, examples, non examples. Like, yeah, your example is, is planets. So you wouldn't have to teach what all of the planets in the solar system are. You would just have to help students recognize what's a planet, what's a star. Like, what's a planet, what's an asteroid. What's a planet, what's an asteroid, and what's yeah. not a, what's a planet, and what is not a planet, but is out there with the planets. But they don't have to teach like the planets in the like solar the system and their Is the moon a planet, sun? Is the sun a planet? No, there's critical attributes that make something a planet and make something not a planet. Okay. Septa, will you stop that, please?